The Amazon's forests and rivers host an extraordinary variety of species, some endemic, others endangered, and many of which are still unknown. This biodiversity is important globally, but it's more than just animals and plants and rainforest. There's much more to this massive place than meets the eye. The Boiling River What comes to your mind when you hear Boiling River? Is the river steaming hot? What exactly is it? Let's find out. The Boiling River, known by natives as Shanae Tempishka, is a stream 6 meters deep and 25 meters wide, which flows for over 4 miles and maintains a temperature that can reach 95 degrees. In case you don't know, this is a very high degree of heat and is capable of killing any life form in a few minutes. For many years, many scholars thought the Boiling River was just a legend, a phenomenon only talked about in stories. According to the legend, Spanish conquistadors ventured into the rainforest in search of gold. Only a few of them returned, and they told stories of man-eating snakes, poisoned water, and a river that boiled from below. In 2011, a young Peruvian geologist, Andre Ruzo, decided to search for the mysterious river. There are many hot springs around the world, but they result from the effect of lava from nearby volcanoes. The puzzling part about this river is that it's 700 kilometers away from the closest volcano. It's the only river of its kind. Its temperature is unbelievable. And the size of the river, that's something else. As much as the river is fascinating, it's also dangerous. Ruzo talks about how he's seen animals fall in and slowly start to boil to death. The water fills their lungs and mouth and they cook from the inside out. But people still swim in the river after heavy rainfalls when it's diluted with cold water. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. They just captured it in the Amazon jungle and nobody can believe it. The Titana Boa. It was after the age of dinosaurs in a part of the world that had recently recovered from an asteroid blast of epic magnitudes. The blast birthed the tropical rainforest along the equator that exists today. A landscape that was damp and swampy, covered in dense tropical foliage, ample places for Titana boa to hide. Think Titanic snake on steroids. A lot of them. Titana boa, the largest snake in the world, lived during around 58 to 60 million years ago. It thrived alongside other enormous species like 13-foot crocodiles and 8-foot turtles. They were about 45 feet on average, which is a third larger than the green anaconda, the largest snake that exists today. So, why is this Titana boa here today, playing with this chopper like it was a toy? Let us know in the comments and make sure to include the hashtag sweet topic, Goliath bird eater. When you hear Goliath, you already know it's a giant creature. The Goliath bird eater is the king of the spiders. No other spider can possibly fight for that position. Against the largest arachnid on the planet, Goliaths weigh as much as a puppy and have foot-long legs. Although they're big enough to eat birds, they usually don't. The name bird eater was gotten from an 18th century engraving that showed a hairy spider eating a hummingbird. It made sense to name it the Therophosha bird eater. The Goliath usually eats whatever it finds on the ground. Frogs, earthworms, and rodents are all its favorites. It injects neurotoxins into its prey with long fangs, then drags the animal to its burrow where the digestion process begins. Because spiders can't digest solid material, not even the one that weighs 6 ounces, they liquefy the prey's insides and suck it dry. Ugh. You're probably wondering if the Goliath bird eater is dangerous. Well, they do know how to defend themselves in a very unusual way. Goliaths have poor eyesight, so they rely on their leg hairs to sense danger. If a predator gets too close, the Goliath's harpoon-shaped hairs come to its rescue. It rubs its legs against its abdomen producing a cloud of tiny, barbed hairs. When the strands connect to the predator's eyes or skin, they cause extreme pain and itching for days. The Goliath doesn't pose much threat to humans. Also, their bites would be as painful as driving a nail through your hand. Walking Palm, a tree that can walk. Trees are classified as living things because they need water, air, and sunlight to survive, reproduce, and grow. And they're pretty stationary. They stay exactly where you plant them. No one's ever disputed that. But a tree that walks? Hmm. 
Is there anything that doesn't exist in the Amazon? So Cradia exorziza is a palm tree in the rainforest in tropical Central and South America. The palm splits into many smaller roots a few feet off the ground, looking like many little legs. The tree literally walks from shade to sunlight by growing roots in the direction it wants to travel. As if that's not already absurd, the old roots lift into the air and die. The story of the walking tree was first shared by John H. Bodley in 1980. According to the journal, the palm uses its roots to walk away from its germination point if another tree falls on the seedling and knocks it over. Although there are a lot of biologists that agree with the doctor, there are many others that think the tale of the walking tree is a myth shared by tourist guides to attract visitors. Everyone agrees that the tree has a unique root system unlike any other. The tree may not walk the walk as humans and animals do, but we like to believe that it moves in a way that makes it different from any other tree on the planet. Amazonian Glass Frog A glass frog is exactly what it sounds like, see-through. They're usually found in Central and South America, where they can rest high in the treetops right above the water. A glass frog is any of a group of tree frogs which have translucent bellies and chests. Its body is usually bright green or olive green in color. The frog is so transparent that when you look at it closely, you can see its heart pumping into the arteries and food moving through its gut. See where the glass in its name comes from? As if that's not magical enough, the translucency on the sides and parts of the frog's back is a type of camouflage that allows the edges of the frog to blend with the relative darkness or brightness of its surroundings. They're arboreal animals. This means that they spend most of their lives in trees and will come to the ground only during the mating season. And their mating ritual is one unusual and funny one. The males have to call the females. The calling males sit on leaves or treetops over lake edges or streams. When the female comes, they mate on the leaf and the female deposits 20 to 30 eggs on the leaf, which hangs right above the water. The male takes on the responsibility of guarding the eggs against predators and calling more females. So a male can have several egg clutches in various stages of development to protect. It's kind of like he's running a nursery. When the tadpoles hatch, they fall into the water below, and that's how generations of glass frogs are made. Victoria Water Lily The Victoria Amazonica, commonly known as the Victoria Water Lily, is a plant that you cannot miss. It's a showstopper more like the center of attention. The Victoria lily has a sheer size. Its leaves can grow up to 10 feet in diameter. That's twice the height of an average person. As if that's not enough magnificence, the leaves are firm and can support the weight of a small child. But that's not an experiment you'd want to conduct in the Amazon, where there are thousands of predators lurking around. The lily itself isn't so innocent. Sitting peacefully on top of the water, they look beautiful and delicate but underneath the surface, they're violent. There are sharp spikes under their leaves that protect them from herbivorous fish that want to have a bite. The bloom of the Victoria water lily is bigger than the average flower. A fully spread water lily measures up to 40 centimeters wide, blanketing an enormous expanse of water with its giant plates of chlorophyll. The petals are initially pure white. The flowers only bloom in the evening and last a mere 48 hours. During this time, they attract and imprison a nocturnal beetle which is held captive overnight. The beetle is locked in until the following evening, long enough for the insect to be fully laden with pollen. When the beetle is released, it will fly off to a different flower and the lily's flowers turn pink, becoming unappealing and somewhat useless. Potu Bird The Potu Bird is known for its camouflage ability. They have a goofy look of constant surprise and big googly yellow eyes. Because of this, they're often used as memes on the internet. They're nocturnal birds that settle in trees where they can be very cryptic. During the day, they perch on the ends of dead branches, almost completely still with their eyes closed. Because of this behavior and their tree-like feathers, they blend in well with the trees, making them almost impossible to spot. They range from 21 to 58 centimeters in length with proportionately long heads and long wings and tails. The combination of all these features gives them their weird and cute look. At night, the birds hunt flying insects. Their large mouths allow them to grab beetles, moths, and termites. Instead of defending themselves from attacks, potus would rather hide. Unlike some animals, they focus on hiding rather than defense techniques. 
So you could be staring at a potu bird and think you're staring at a tree branch. The second the coast is clear and the bird's sure it's safe, it relaxes and returns to its normal behavior. It's okay to call the potu bird a con artist. Decoy Building Spider The decoy building spider is proof that spiders are more intelligent than we think. Somewhere in the Peruvian Amazon, a spider is crafting its doppelganger with bits of debris, leaves, and dead prey insects. This decoy has multiple spider legs, a head, and an abdomen. It's like a costume the spider slits itself into to appear bigger than it usually is. The decoy spider is four times the size of the actual spider. The recently discovered spider is thought to be a member of the genus Cyclosa. Researchers believe they build the decoys as part of a defense mechanism to distract or confuse predators. But it's funny they go through all that to hide, don't you think? However, it's not surprising spiders can build such a structure since they already make magnificent geometric webs pretty easily. When a group of researchers first discovered the spider, they thought it was a dead spider caught in a web. But then the supposed corpse began twitching. Then researchers noticed the smaller spider inside the decoy shaking the web. Their minds were blown. Ours would be too if we discovered it. Pink Dolphin Ever heard of a pink dolphin? If not, here's your chance. The Amazon Pink River Dolphin is the largest freshwater dolphin in the world. It's the subject of many South American folklore, one of which claims that the dolphin morph into handsome men called Bodo Encantado to seduce and impregnate women by night. The locals consider it bad luck to harm the dolphins and even worse to eat them. The dolphin is social and very intelligent. The brighter the pink, the more attractive the males are to the females. The pink dolphin can also turn its head from side to side, unlike other dolphins, because its spine isn't connected. Pink dolphins are the largest of the four river dolphin species, reaching up to 8 feet long and 450 pounds. Notwithstanding the fact that they're cute, pink dolphins are regarded by scientists as top predators of the Amazon aquatic ecosystem. They're the jaguars of the rivers, so they're not so friendly to the creatures down there. Because of its status in the Peruvian Amazon as a semi-magical creature, local communities are encouraged to treat them well and preserve their numbers. Sadly, they're now endangered by environmental pollution and deliberate killings. Jabuch Caba Weird Fruit and Tree Jabuch Cabas are superstars in the plant kingdom because of the many assets they have. They look exactly like grapes, hence the nickname tree grapes. But unlike grapes, these little fruits wind up around tree trunks sometimes overtaking the tree completely. The fruits are actually attached to the trunk of the tree. Not on tree branches or anything, the trunk. This is what's known in the plant world as cauliflory. If you come across the tree, you might think it's under attack by purple balls, but the purple balls are actually fruit. The fruit are high in nutrients and antioxidants. Their taste and texture are similar to muscadine grapes. The best way to eat the fruit is by making a hole in the skin with your teeth and sucking out the white flesh inside. The skin is used medicinally to treat asthma and dysentery by harvesters. There are wide varieties of the fruit. One of the most common is the red, which tastes like blueberry yogurt. They have kinds that taste like grape candy and others that taste like sour lychees. They're popular in native Brazil, where they're commonly eaten out of hand. Other than the weird fruits, the tree is so beautiful and it has gorgeous peeling bark and small white flowers that are extremely fragrant. When the tree blooms, it fills the air with an intoxicating scent that announces that the fruits are on the way. Leaf Mimic Katie Did A number of animals possess camouflage abilities. We've talked about two on this list already. But you see, Leaf Mimic Katie Digs take disguise to a whole new level. They belong to the family of a group of insects that mimic leaves. But these bugs don't mimic fresh green leaves, instead they resemble decaying, rotten, dry, torn, and speckled ones. Some of the katydids even have holes which are areas with translucent membrane windows, making them look like leaves with holes. Here's another remarkable fact. No two individuals under a single species are alike. They vary so widely in appearance that about 22% of all species have been found and categorized more than once under different names. 
Their major predators are monkeys. Because primates are very smart and can quickly identify a fake leaf if all the katydids imitated the same leaf, every individual katydid has its own fake, which makes it more difficult for the monkeys to identify them. Katydids are artists, each individual pretending, in a different way, to be a leaf. Poison Frog Poison frogs inhabit the forests of the New World tropics from Nicaragua to Brazil. Just as their name reveals, they have the ability to produce highly poisonous skin secretions. They're also known as poison dart frogs, dart poison frogs, or poison arrow frogs. Whichever way, there's always a poison in its name. They're generally small species of about 0.75 to 1.5 inches in length. They wear some of the most beautiful colors on Earth, ranging from yellow to copper, gold, green, black or blue, depending on individual habitats. Their brilliant and elaborate designs are colors. Their brilliant and elaborate designs and colors are deliberately showy to ward off possible predators. This tactic is known as aposematic or warning corporation. It's common among poisonous species of many animals and plants. Poison darts communicate by calling one another in the flooded forest. They make these sounds to attract mates, express distress, or mark territories. Male poison frogs are known for the exceptional care they give their tadpoles and eggs, attending to the clutch and performing essential transportation duties. Way to go, dads! Amorphophallus titanium Amorphophallus titanium, also called corpse flower, is known for its huge, foul-smelling cluster of flowers. It's the largest unbranched inflorescence in the plant kingdom and blooms for just two to three days once every year or two. In these three days, the bud can grow up to eight feet tall. When in bloom, it's a major tourist attraction. The attraction of the corpse flower comes from its great size, reeking smell, and fleeting presence. The stink is often compared to the stench of rotting flesh, hence the name corpse flower. The smell is most potent during peak bloom at night into the early morning. Also, the flower generates heat, more than 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which allows the smell to travel further and attracts corpse-attracted pollinators like carrion beetles and flesh flies. The massive inflorescence of the corpse flower is made up of an inner flower spike known as a spadix, surrounded by a petal-like collar. Although the flower only blooms for around 24 to 48 hours, its growth peaks at a rate of up to 16 inches every day. The corpse flower wows visitors of all ages. If the appearance doesn't fascinate you, the smell definitely will. Pestalotiopsis microspora Pestalotiopsis microspora is a rare fungus in the Amazonian rainforest of Ecuador that can consume a type of plastic called polyurethane. The fungus consumes the plastic and converts it into organic matter. The plastic-eating fungus can also live without oxygen which makes it the perfect tool for cleaning up landfills. Some scientists have harnessed the power of plastic-eating fungus. The prototype project uses mushroom-like pods of seaweed-based gelatin as a nutrient-packed base for the fungus. The pods are filled with plastic and fungus, and over time, the fungus consumes the plastic as well as the sugar and starches contained in the agar holder. The resulting mushroom-like cup can be filled with other food or eaten whole. We don't know about you, but the idea of eating fungi that's eaten a pile of trash sounds absurd. The process takes several months and is clean and cool, but that doesn't change the fact that it's plastic and fungi. Stonehenge made out of silk Scientists were confused when they found a silky spire surrounded by a circular picket fence. The structures are called silk hinges because of their building material and the mystery of their origin. They're called silk hinges because of their similarity to the enigmatic stone monument in England. The scientists later figured that the structures serve as protective fences around spider egg sacs. However, the species of spider responsible for the structure are yet to be identified. The scientists found orange spiderlings in the spire, but instead of solving the mystery, it provided new evidence. A DNA test was carried out, but it only revealed an 86% match to other species in the database. This meant either of two things, it's a new species of spider, or it's a spider whose DNA has yet to be cataloged in the database. The structures are frequently found on the undersides of broad leaves, but sometimes they show up on the bark. The silk hinge has kept scientists up at night. Basilisk Lizard 
The basilisk lizard is also known as the Jesus lizard. They're large and native to Mexico, Central America, and South America. Like Jesus, these lizards can walk on water. In fact, they can run extremely fast over water before sinking. There are four known classes of these lizards, and the most commonly seen is the green basilisk lizard, also known as the double-crested one. This lizard can run upwards to 5 feet per second for nearly 15 feet before it eventually sinks into the water and starts swimming. The basilisk lizard can do this because of its feet. They have long toes that spread out along the surface of the water, allowing them to slap against the surface at a fast pace. Basically, they have webbed feet. The lizards can stay submerged underwater for nearly 10 minutes. This means that they're also excellent swimmers. The lizards typically dwell in trees where they feed off of insects. When they're threatened by predators, they drop from the trees into the water and begin their escape tactic. So, the basilisk lizards have proven to be incredible escape artists. Stick-like insect Stick insects resemble the twigs they live among, which provide them with one of the most efficient natural camouflages on the planet. They're strange-looking creatures. They're all long and thin. You'd think they're sticks in a tree or bush. The walking sticks range in size from half an inch long to 13 inches long. Female walking sticks are usually larger than males. Many stick insects have beautiful wings, and others have stump-like wings. A number of species have spines on their bodies. Like many camouflage animals, stick insects are nocturnal creatures and spend much of their day motionless, hidden under plants. They're also predominantly found in the tropics and subtropics and thrive in forests and grasslands. We've learned of some pretty cool defense mechanisms in this video. Here's another to add to that list. Stick insects pretend to be dead to deceive predators. A stick insect will shed a limb to escape an attacker's grasp. They can also swipe at predators with their spine-covered legs. Red-bellied piranha The red-bellied piranha is a razor-toothed carnivorous South American freshwater fish that's been cast in about five Hollywood horror movies. In the 1978 movie Piranha, the piranha is presented as a voracious killer but the truth is that they're not that dangerous. Most species are scavengers or feed on plant material. Their diet includes insects, aquatic invertebrates, bits of flesh, and whole small fish. The fish are red on their undersides from chin and cheeks to belly. They hardly ever grow larger than two feet long and weigh up to four pounds. The red-bellied piranhas travel in schools of 20 or more individuals. They prefer prey that's only slightly larger or slightly smaller than them. They hunt in groups and converge in a feeding frenzy if a large animal is attacked, meaning they feast together on large prey, although this rarely happens. Most times, the group spreads to look for a target. When one group attacks one, they signal for the others. Every piranha takes a bite and makes way for others to do so. If this isn't the definition of family, we wonder what is. World's Largest Anacondas South America's green anaconda is the largest snake in the world. It can grow to more than 29 feet, weigh more than 550 pounds, and measure more than 12 inches in diameter. The anaconda has oval black spots and ochre on the flanks. Its body is broad and muscular, adapted to kill its prey by constriction. Its head is narrow and its nostrils and eyes are in an elevated position to make breathing easier during the long periods that the snake spins submerged. You should know the green anaconda is a skillful swimmer thanks to its powerful muscles. It can travel short distances underwater or on the surface very quickly, where it's capable of reaching a speed of 6 meters per second. On the ground, its movement is slow and heavy. The snake usually hunts animals that come for a drink. Poor things! The green anaconda traps them with jaws and simultaneously wraps itself around the prey's body to suffocate it. In a little over 10 seconds, the prey dies, and because snakes cannot chew food, the anaconda swallows it whole. The green anaconda's favorite preys are red brocket deer, brown brocket deer, capybara, lizards, turtles, birds, other mammals, and small reptiles. Candiru Amazonian Parasitic Catfish Candiru is a scaleless, parasitic catfish found in the Amazon River region. According to legend, the small catfish can enter the genitalia of anyone who urinates in the Amazonian waters. If this happens, amputation is probably the only course of action. 
because the spines on the head of the fish make it very difficult to extract. Research has proven that this belief is a myth and the candee root isn't capable of swimming up a stream of urine. This fish is several small species of catfish in the waterways of the Amazon basin. They feed off the blood of other fish species. Because of how small and light they are, these catfish can easily sneak up on its hosts. It's very difficult to see the fish in the murky Amazon waters. It's almost as if it's transparent. The eel-like fish is about one inch long. Once inside their victim, it erects short spines on its gill covers and may cause hemorrhage, inflammation, or death to the victim. Creepy Parasitic Fungus The parasitic fungus transforms ants into zombies. Somewhere in the Amazonian forest, there is an ant underneath a leaf 25 centimeters above the forest floor, clinging with its jaws to the leaf's central vein for dear life. But the ant's life is already over and it's now possessed by this creature, the zombie ant fungus. It's like something out of a horror movie. The fungus hijacks the brain of its ant host, mind controlling it into abandoning its nest and climbing a nearby tree. Sounds insane, right? The ant leaves its nest for a more humid microclimate that's favorable to the fungus's growth. The ant sinks its jaws into a leaf vein and waits for death while the fungus feeds on its victim's innards. Several days after the death of the ant, the fungus sends a fruiting body through the base of the ant's head, and the corpse becomes a launch pad for which the fungus can dump its spores and infect new ants. We think it's unbelievable that an ant, a tiny little ant that's been hijacked by a parasitic fungi, can be seen walking around. Thankfully, they can only be found in the forests of tropical countries. No one wants a zombie ant in their apartment. Over half of the world's estimated 10 million animals, plants, and insect species call the Amazon rainforest home. 